Welcome once again to our coach show here on Talk 101.3 The Buzz, where all of our shows are brought to you by LMB Appliance out there on Dirt Key Road. We appreciate their continued support of Bradley Central High School Athletics. Being joined now, as always, by head coach Damon Florida, the Bears. Coach, uh, we got to go back and look at Friday night, or Thursday night, Thursday night, Thursday night game with Beard. And I mean, we made some mistakes. We had problems. You're never going to have a perfect game, but my goodness. It all seemed to come together the way that we've been hoping all year long, and we've seen that flashes from time to time of a quarter or a half maybe looking good. Then the whole game, I mean, from the get-go, we were on target, and Bearden is a much better team than they show. There oh, yeah. is no doubt they are a very, very good team. Well coached, deep, very athletic and all that. Sometimes things go bad for you, and things go good for the other team. And that was one of those nights that the Bears, I guess their best all-around game of the year. For four quarters, no doubt, yeah. you know, and I'm usually pretty negative, so uh, it's hard to be negative about Thursday night. It's a lot of positives. Uh, you know, in pregame warm-up, we actually came back in as a coach staff, so, man, I just don't think our guys are ready to play. Really? And, no. <laughs> of course, that tells you how much we know. But um, a lot of, lot of good things, obviously, and we talked about it all year. We just didn't feel like we clicked as a unit. Yeah. And, I mean, offense, defense, special teams all in one game. There's been times the offense has played unbelievable. Defense has given up some – Silly penalties or silly yep. touchdowns or first downs, and then special teams, we've had our problems. But that was one night that everything came together against a really good, talented, well-coached team. Um, and what better way to do it, you know, at the end of the year? Now, mm -hmm. can we keep it going? That's yeah. the question. So, uh, but, yeah, it was really, really fun night. It, it really, really was. And, you know, we scored 46 points. That's the most Bearden's given up all year. We held them to 14. That's the fewest, fewest they've scored all year. So both sides of the ball are playing really good. And I didn't know this stat, but I looked over the weekend working on, on uh, year-to-date stats and looked at that. Second quarter, we've outscored the opponent by 86 points that quarter, 123 to 37. Did mm -hmm. you realize how much we'd? No, I, mean, no, I had no idea. Domination in the second quarter. I don't know why. I'm, we've outscored the opponents in every other quarter as well, but like 20 or 30 points, something like that. But I don't know if something happens in Friday night, Thursday night, 20 points, I think, in the second quarter. We're up 32 to 18. 18 and a half time, is mm -hmm. that what it was? Or no, that wouldn't be right, they only had 14. Uh, yeah, 32 14. 32 14. At halftime, yeah. And, and it seemed like after we kicked off to them and held them, they held us and so forth, and then we scored. And then they had that bad punt from their 10 yard line, went to the 11 yard line or something, you know, and we scored right again. So it's up, we're up two touchdowns already. And it's, that to me was a key play, I guess. And the fourth down play on the fake punt. Mm -hmm which you guys have the guts to call something like that against a good team when the game's still in doubt. But it, it, what did you see in that fake punt? That Because uh, you call, you lined up the punt, and then you call a timeout. Is no, there something? No, we didn't call a timeout. Oh, um, you didn't? Okay. No, we lined up quickly, but then we checked the sidelines. Oh, okay. And it's something that you game plan. If, yeah. And, and the way we – there's a reason we have our punt team the way we do and lined up. So it does kind of invite the, the defense or the what we, most people call attack team uh, – they think they can block it because of the way we're lined up. If you're willing to line up that way, then you yeah. got to be willing to fake it. So uh, there was a couple things that went into thought there. Number one, the way they lined up in previous games, we, we thought it would be there. Yeah. Uh, the next thing was their return man has, I think, almost 1,000 yards in return yardage wow. this year. So we're kicking, you know, on, I don't know, about our 20 coming out. He's probably going to catch it around the 50. He's probably going to get some return yards. If he do, if we don't tackle him, then he may score. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, we've been in enough games, I've coached enough games where after a game you don't want to go back and think, I should have done this, I should have tried that. And yeah. you're out there to win, so we're going to call the game to try to win. And if it doesn't work, then defense needs to bowl their back and, uh, you know, try to, try to rally around something else at that point. But we felt good about it. So fortunate that, you know, Caleb being our punter, and you got like guys like Tito Williams who's, who's pretty good at execution, and, and obviously they did a good job of that. And speaking of Tito Williams, man, he's leading that defense. He's got over 90 tackles in the season. Now, he's in the top three or four, but you got a youngster named Wiley Susquitz. He's right behind him in season tackles, and he's been a, a great help there. But it's not just those two. It's the entire team. It's just over and over and over you see it. Uh, one week it's one guy stepping up, the next week it's another guy, and some weeks it's multiple guys. In our defense, I was reading someone talk about the swarming Bradley defense. And, brother, you get a guy in trouble, and here comes a whole team after him. And it's uh, Brad Benefield, our defense coordinator, took over the duties from you there. But it's been a really solid year. Every game, if, if we're 
having issues. It's usually not because of the defense, I guess. The thing. Uh, we've had some issues. Yeah, we uh, have. You know, we've given up some long yarded situations against Farragut, against, uh, well, last week, you know, Bearden doesn't score that one touchdown if mm -hmm. it's third and long if we make the tackle on the screen and we miss two tackles on it. Um, Cleveland, we missed two tackles on fourth and long that end up getting them a touchdown and two guys there. But I, I think the bottom line is our guys are very unselfish on defense and they understand they have a job to do. It doesn't always mean make a tackle. Sometimes it's taking out a blocker so your teammate can make a tackle. And they're playing very confident right now, which they should. Uh, but we have a lot of guys with a lot of speed uh, that are reading their keys, doing their job. And then to be quite honest, we've not missed a whole lot of tackles this year. We're bringing them down. And I will say this, it does help on the back end, once again, having Tito, Marcus, Boo, Demarius, Mason, all those guys with those speed, mm -hmm. we're able to load the box a lot. Uh, but you got to give Brad Benefield a lot of credit. You know, when he first got here, we were kind of going to co-coordinate. I think after, I don't know, a scrimmage or two, it's like, man, you got it. And he's done a great job with <laughs> yeah, it. He, 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 makes, he makes a lot of adjustments on the sidelines, under the tent. He does a great job game planning. Our kids love him. And the biggest thing about him, man, he's just a great guy. Yeah. And uh, they play hard for him. So, obviously, a huge, huge addition to our staff. Um, but I'll say this, too, not only defense, but offense. Yeah. I think one of the reasons we exploded like we did is that all of our playmakers got the ball at different times. The ball was spread around so evenly. Mm -hmm. You know, Caleb got some touchdowns, but there's a couple times he's pulling it because they're tackling our running back. There's nobody there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's spreading around the ball. It's kind of hard to focus on one guy. And I know Jarius and Boo and Jay Allen and uh, let's see, Caleb scored. I don't think Jackson scored, but I thought he had some huge runs he or sure screen did. catches. Yeah. Uh, we we did a great job blocking. Not only our offensive line, but our great our skill guys did a great job of blocking. So once again, just like we talked about defense unselfish, our guys are bought in and they're unselfish, and um, it's about the team. Well, I, we had read, and I know you don't like to read this stuff in social media or wherever, but people up in Knoxville said, well, Bearden is too strong, too tough in the middle. They can do this. Uh, it's going to be a very tight game. Who knows who's going to win? Maybe the last team to score win. And it was a, a mercy rule game. That, and we should have had another touchdown. We had one call back, you know. So it, mm -hmm. it's, it's the one that we should have had there. It would have been even worse. This week, I mean, I know the kids were really high for that game last week. And the week before with Cleveland, uh, now you got Westridge coming in here. We're going to talk about them in detail in a minute. But it's a mental, it's a mental focus. Is that where your captains and your seniors have to step up, and say, hey guys, you know, slap them across the head, and say, hey, that means nothing. We're zero and zero. We're going to move forward. It's starting the season. Basically. It's something that's coaching staff. We've talked to our team about. Yeah. I think it's up to our leaders to make sure that our whole yeah. team understands that. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. The players don't like to listen to the coaches a whole lot. Right. I mean, they get tired of it. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, but when players talk, then teammates listen. And our, I think our, our leaders and our guys that, that play on Friday nights, they understand what's at stake, and everybody is 0-0. Zero zero. It's nice that we accomplish that, but it means nothing at this point. So that's something we've stressed. Um, and, you know, we prepare for every opponent, but really it's about us. Same thing in Bearden. We knew, we knew what the game plan was, but it was our guys executing. And, you know, Bearden was just one of those games, like we've already mentioned, it just everything kind of went our way. Yeah. Yeah. And I guarantee you this, if we saw Bearden again, it's not going to be 46-14. Right. It'll be a dogfight. The, the <laughs> fake punt went our way. The, the bad punt they had went our way. Um, there was a lot of little breaks throughout the game that it just kind of steamrolled. And, you know, when momentum gets on your side, it's hard to break. And yeah. glad it happened, but really, honestly, that means nothing. And we are, really need to focus on this week, not next week. It's one game at a time, and everybody's zero and zero. And I'm sure West Ridge is going to be excited to come in here and try to knock us off. Oh, I guarantee they will be. Uh, special team, special team, special team. We just can't say too much about how important that is. Let's take a break here for it'll be appliance here on Talk 101.3. We'll return, and we'll take a look at this West Ridge Wolves team coming in here for the opening game in the playoffs. Back in a moment.
Welcome back to our weekly coach show with Coach Damon Floyd here on Talk 101.3, where our show is brought to you by LV Appliance. Westridge High School out of Bluntville, Tennessee, combination of Sullivan South, Sullivan North, Sullivan Central went together there. Just opened three years ago. Made the playoffs that first year, nine and three. Be the team, see the higher than they were, guess what? It's beat Cleveland High School. That first, first playoff game in their history was against Cleveland High School, and they beat Cleveland High School. What do we know about them? I, I, Coach Hilton has been there four years before that, Sullivan South, three years now at, at Westridge. What do you see with Westridge? What's, and I know they lost their quarterback to a wrist injury or something, you know, so. Um, don't know a whole lot about them. Obviously, we have film on them, and, and we've broken that film down. But, you know, it's totally different when you watch film than you get in person and see certain kids. But uh, they did lose their quarterback, who was, who was a really good player. And, you know, since they lost their quarterback, they're, they're being very creative mm -hmm. on offense of trying to find ways to move the ball and score. Um, and let's be honest, they've had trouble doing that because if he was out, uh, as any team would. So I will say this, I think they're a physical team. Mm -hmm. I think they got big, they look size-wise to be a pretty big team. And in some spots, they're not as big, just like us. Mm -hmm. uh, Speed-wise, not going to sugarcoat it, we have the advantage. They're not as fast as us, but we've got to make sure that we take care of that and take advantage of those opportunities uh, offensively and defensively. So um, the bottom line is if we don't do what we're supposed to do, they're a 6A football team that can come in here and beat you. So uh, we, we've game plan. Uh, our kids understand the game plan. Now it's about going out and executing. So um, this is a game that we should go out and take care of business. No disrespect to them, but we're more talented. But... They're going to play hard, and they're going to do things right, and they do things right. They're, you can tell they're coached very well. Mm -hmm. So there's some things that they can do to take advantage of us, and I'm sure they'll try to hold the ball and limit our possessions. You know, same thing happened to Maryville Farragut last year. I mean, last week, Farragut beats Maryville. Maryville had 29 offensive plays for the game. If they come in there and do that to us, and they have some heavy packages, well, I'm sure that's going to be a game plan. Yeah. They're going to try to keep the ball out of our hands. So when we have it offensively, we've got to take advantage. Well, reading about their last game uh, in the newspaper reports from up there, they have what they call a bear offense, B-E-A-R, like a Bradley Bear. They have a bear offense. And with the quarterback out there, they said they tried to, we got two pretty good running backs to try to run tackle to tackle. Is that like more like a, sort of like a tight formation, a wing tee? They, it's, uh, it's, very, it's, it's a heavy package, but it's multiple how they do it. Sometimes they're Wildcat, which mm -hmm. they, number four, I don't know his name, but he tries, he's their best athlete. They get him the ball in space, or getting him the ball in his hands in a heavy package. And then sometimes it's wing tee-ish, sometimes it's power eye, so it's smash mouth. You know, the wing tee, obviously, it's a little bit of misdirection. Uh, like I said, they do a good job scheme-wise of making sure that you're going to read your keys, be mm -hmm. in, the right, in the right places. So um, they've got a lot of different formations that we've seen. So making sure we line up and which key do you have on, a, on each particular set defensively, it changes. So uh, it's, a, it's really about communication. The good thing is we've seen a lot of this stuff throughout the season on, you know, the opponents we've had. So yeah. uh, it's nothing really new to our guys. But... It is a different kind of uh, offense than we've really seen all year. Uh, just preparing for a team like that that's virtually been around three years and you don't know much about versus preparing for someone like a McNeen County or Cleveland or somebody that you've, you know the coach staff, you know what their tendencies are, does it make it more difficult for you and the staff to, to figure that out? It's got to, I would think. No, well, there's no doubt. Now, yeah. you know, as we talked about all year when, when Boo was here, since Boo had been here, you may, you may know um, – the way opponents like to play certain things because you played them for so long, mm -hmm. but then that changed on Friday night. So um, don't really know until we show up. Now we plan for everything. Like yeah. as an offense, you, you plan for different fronts, different coverages. You put in their blitz package, what, what we like against it. But really in, this year until you show up on Friday night, it, yeah. it, it, you don't really know. So uh, yeah, it makes a difference when you know coaches and, and teams that you've seen year after year after year. Well, a Friday night is all to keep the season going, 10-0, and we've never been there. You've been there 8-0. and uh, You've won 10 games before, but that was with concluding two postseason wins. First time since 76 that we've run the regular season unbeaten there. Our crowds have been really good. I know we keep talking about them, but we had a capacity overflow crowd on our side Friday night. And I, I know you guys hear them out there. I know the, the players do, and they react to that. And uh, I, I, it was tickling me when J.J. Harrison came in there, and they, fans were cheering him on. He was doing his thing out there, and he was eating that up too. And I, Talked to him yesterday, and they said it made me feel good, you know, to hear that. I know, and Holden White was kicking extra points for us, but uh, the crowds reacted to stuff like that, and that's that's got to make the team feel good, the players out there. There's no doubt, and I think if well, I know this personally, I when I walked on the field Friday, 
I saw our side and thought, like usual, we show up and, yeah. and we cheer and we're very. We got, I get. I think we have the best, uh, you know, home side in, in the state of Tennessee yeah. with our fans and our student section. But and then you looked at Beard's side and I was disappointed to be honest. Yeah, I was too. You know, and I know that the game was on TV, so they probably just watched it on TV. But I, I think that plays a part for our players and. You know, J.J., who you talked about, he's really came on the past four yes. or five weeks. Yes, he um, has. He's, a big, he's, he's helping us a lot. And then, you know, after the game, our players, Holden White had some huge extra points, and they're yeah. lifting him up in the air. Winning's fun, don't get me wrong, yeah. and all those things don't happen if you don't win. But those are the things that you really appreciate, yeah. you know, because your yeah. team cares about each other. Yeah. And I mentioned it before, but as a coach, that's pretty cool. That's, yeah. what, you, that's what you like to see. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I was talking to three or four games get, go home game, one of the local uh, Chattanooga sports outlets and all that was up here, and I didn't know the guy, and I seen him with media credentials on. I walked down and started talking to him. He said, one thing I know at Bradley Central High School, when I come, they're going to have a crowd there. He said, it's unlike this at other games we go to. They have some decent crowds and things like that, unless it's Baylor McCauley, which is you know, a tremendous help. He says, here at Bradley Central, I told the guys coming up, they'll have a great crowd there, and, and we did. And I think that's just part of the tradition we have. This game, a big, big game, we need that same group of Bradley people out there Friday night, 7 o'clock kickoff. He AA controls all that, and they'll assign officials, I think, from Chattanooga this week. Uh, uh, I don't, I'm not sure. You, I thought usually it's from Knoxville, but I, it could be. I don't know. I don't Turner, know. Turner told me yesterday it's from Chattanooga. Chattanooga is what okay. I think he'd been told. But uh, whatever it is, we'll have an eight-man staff, though. <laughs> it won't yes. be five-man Chattanooga staff again there. Well, Coach, thanks again, as always. Congratulations on the 10-0 season and number one ranking still there and all that. The big guys, Maryville got beat, Oakland got beat, McCauley got beat. They're still unbeaten and, and hanging on, but it means nothing. It means nothing. Like you said, we start all over this Friday night to continue our season. Somebody in this state's going to win five games and be crowned state champion. So that's how it stands right now. We'll wrap it up. Thanks again for LB Appliance. Thanks for Emily Quinn sitting in today for Mr. Troy here on the Bear Studio. Until next time, God bless and go Bears.